Support Laneside. Get something cool. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Drill Room. As always, I am the Bearded Beast, Rob Johnson. I want to welcome you once again to our show that is about the bowler by the bowler, uh, where we talk about really anything you want to. And tonight is one of my favorite nights. Tonight is our social night. This is where we can get together, and we really don't have too many topics planned. We've got a few things to talk about, but really it's all about you, the viewer. We're going to go over some uh, questions from online, from uh, our different social media platforms. We're going to talk about uh, our product of the week that we're kind of giving a look at. Uh, we're also going to look at youth bowling. Big topic this week. I know lots of people are uh, going to want to uh, talk about this, uh, hopefully, in our chat here. Uh, once again, if you uh, want to join us here on the Drill Room, uh, watch our uh, lane side reviews, or just uh, get involved in conversations, ask some questions. You can find us anytime on any one of our social media platforms. Uh, if you just uh, type in hashtag Team LSR or lane side reviews, that should bring you to most places. But uh, just to let you know, we are on Reddit, uh, YouTube, of course, since you're here, uh, Twitch, we're on Facebook at uh, lanesidereviews.com. It'll take you straight there. Uh, we are also on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We are all over the place, and we want to talk to you. We want to make bowling accessible to everyone. It's uh, basically been the main goal of my entire career is to make sure that everyone has access to bowling information no matter uh, where you are, what your uh, social or political or monetary values are. Uh, everyone should have access to good coaching, good information, and um, this is how we're going to do it. So uh, hopefully this isn't too loud. I'm going to turn on a little fan here just to blow some wind at me because uh, it's a scorcher tonight. Good heavens, it has been hot the last few days. Uh, this weekend it got quite hot, uh, at least here in Barrie, Ontario, it got quite hot. Um, I know not a lot of people believe in in Canada that it actually gets warm, but uh, indeed it does, and it got quite warm. Got up into, I think it was 35 or 35 or 36 this weekend. So, you know, 100 degrees. That's you know Floridian Texan kind of weather. You know, uh, the poor polar bears were were sitting on tiptoes with little umbrellas on top of their ever shrinking ice cubes and. The penguins all packed up their bags and were flying uh, farther north with the geese. So, uh, yeah, it was a scorcher. So, um, I think we're going to dive into things. I don't know how we're doing for viewers there. Who knows who we've got actually out there tonight. Um, if you have something you don't like to talk about, don't forget you can use the chat right there. Nope, there. Right there. Just type it in there, it'll come up here, and I will answer everything as much as possible. Um, but let's start off the show a little bit with youth bowling, something that is uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah, As a coach for Team Canada, I get to work with a lot of youth. I get to uh, work with them and help uh, develop careers um, so that they can have the right information, the right building blocks uh, to make the best decisions they can when they're at tournaments, when they're out, you know, whether it's for national events, provincial state events, um, or if it's just some 10, ga 10 gamer somewhere. Um, but, you know, it's my responsibility as a coach to make sure that I take care of my athletes. Um, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what it, what it takes to be a youth coach, some of the things that we go through in Canada uh, that may be different from other countries. Um, I know it's definitely different from the USBC program. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about events. So, um, yeah. Oh, also this week, we're going to talk about where Scoops and Wayne are because we talked about having them come in and do a round table. And I think we actually... Hey, Vincent! Um... We actually, uh, I think we have a date for it, a couple of weeks. We're going to be able to get Wayne on here. And, um, yeah, really, really excited to uh, get a roundtable where you'll be able to ask 
anyone questions, we're just going to kind of not really talk about any topic. We'll just talk about bowling in general. Um, hey, non-bearded beast. Hey, guys. Great. Thank you for joining once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so once again, we're going to talk a little bit of youth, uh, youth bowling. We've got our product of the week that we're going to take a look at. It's actually a Neo, Neotax Hook It Surface Pro 2000. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see this and see what it does as different from something that would normally clean a bowling ball. So we're going to check that out. Um, so let's jump right in first. Where's Scoops and Wayne? Scoops is hopefully not on a highway right now. Uh, the last I saw he was stuck on highway. I think it, uh, don't giggle, do not giggle, but I think he was stuck on highway 69. Um, I don't know if there was an accident or something, but they were going to be there a while. So hopefully, uh, Scoops will get to his destination um, or has already gotten there, and he will be uh, lounging, maxing, and relaxing. He's taking vacation time. Um, Scoops never sleeps, and uh, for once, I think he's going to. He might fall asleep like in a dinghy in the water. And uh, old guy Wayne, he's doing his thing. He is at home. Uh, he'll be bowling tomorrow here in Barrie. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to try to get them together and, uh, I think two weeks, I think. Um, and we'll get them and we can talk about anything you want. Don't forget to send in questions for that too, because that could be really fun if you have any interesting questions that you want a specific person to answer. Um, moving on from there, let's talk youth bowling. Let's just jump right into it. Um, while we wait for some questions. Um, unfortunately, no pro, sh pro shop horror story this week. I'm always, I'm always kind of sad and happy when, uh, I don't have a pro shop horror story to report on. It means that something hasn't gone terribly wrong for somebody somewhere. So that's, uh, and I guess that's what you get for using an Ipsia certified driller like myself, um, or other Ipsia certified drillers across North America. Uh, and actually, I think across the world now, um, you get highly trained, qualified professionals drilling your equipment who've gone to school for it. So speaking of school youth bowling, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, something that not a lot of bowlers think about. And this is really good for bowling parents to think about. And that's the events that you are attending. Um, there are a lot of... Not so much in Canada, but in the U.S. there are lots of different uh, youth events that are offered. And you really have to be careful when you're going to these events and make sure that these are uh, sanctioned events. Um, I heard about a bowler this weekend, unfortunately, who had won an event to qualify for Junior Gold. And two days before she was supposed to leave, she found out that her tournament that she won wasn't properly certified so she couldn't go um, there are unfortunately lots of uncertified tournaments out there that can actually impact your ability to be an amateur going forward um, it's very important to make sure that when you're dealing with uh, scholarship money and youth bowling that you make sure that the tournament organizers that you are going uh, to compete in their events are backed by the governing body of, of USBC or CTF or whoever um, in your local area um, because they know the proper steps that have to be taken to make sure that you don't violate any terms. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more later, but um, actually, no, I'm going to talk more about it now. Um, I had a little thing about it later, but eh, it makes more sense now. Um, what a lot of people don't understand is if you compete in an event that is unsanctioned, especially if you're looking to or are attending an NCAA school, that can actually greatly impact your ability to compete and can actually come back and bite your university, or the team that you compete for in the butt. Um, if you violate the standards, which are very strict in the NCAA, if you violate those standards, they'll come back after you. They can come back and claw back your scholarships. 
um, claw back any money they've given you. They can do some really nasty things. So you have to be, you have to make sure, especially as a parent, um, that the people that you are dealing with that are running these events are running properly run sanctioned events. Um, that just protects you, that protects your athlete. Um, now speaking about protecting your athlete, um, let's talk coaching. Coaching's an awesome, uh, obviously near to my heart as well, it's an awesome subject. Coaching in Canada is a lot different, I've learned, than a lot of other places. Um, you know, there is, there is this prevailing thought pattern that uh, all coaches are volunteers and really you just give them a couple of dollars and they make you a coach and whatever. You know, anybody can be a coach. And um, maybe 30 years ago, I don't know what it used to be like, um, I know that USBC has really changed their policies as to who can be a coach. They run pretty stringent background uh, checks now with their volunteer play program. Um, like there's, there's a lot of stuff that you have to go through to be able to work with youth. In Canada, um, the best way I can describe it, it's pretty near but getting a university degree. Um, like for Canadians, before we even talk about lane specific things for coaches, like before we ever get on the lanes, uh, like myself, I've gone through, uh, three different courses on con concussion protocols and return to sport protocols, um, health and safety standards for dealing with athletes, um, two separate mental health courses on how to protect and how to watch the mental health of your, of your athletes, uh, courses on leadership, uh, how to properly run practices based on, uh, you know, scientifically backed methods, um, and not only just running practices, but creating uh, physical programs to help the athletes become better athletes to, to work on their strength and conditioning. Um, we have to do courses on eating, uh, so, so many courses on code of conduct, um, on how you're allowed to talk to athletes, like um, you can't take a youth athlete aside without another coach and a parent, and if you're really trying to be safe, somebody else too, but at least two coaches together, um, and if it's a, if it's a youth, has to have a guardian as well, just to talk to somebody. Otherwise, you put yourself at tremendous risk. Um, you know, if somebody were to go and just take a bowler aside and start saying whatever, like they put themselves at real monetary risk um, because really it's their word against the youths and that's that can be scary. Like that's, well, it's there to protect the youth. Like you don't want somebody taking a youth aside and start yelling and screaming at them and telling them they can't do this or they can't do that or whatever. That's what we're trying to protect. There's been so many problems with it over the years. Um, there is so much training that we have to do to learn. We basically have to learn to become proper coaches. Um, one of my colleagues, Brent Pinnell, um, is doing his master's in uh, basically I don't want to say physical education, but because he's so much more than that. He is training to be like basically a doctor coach. Um, and the things that we are going through are similar to what, you know, he would have to go through for his courses. So we have to learn quite a bit. It doesn't matter what we know bowling wise before we jump into this. We have to learn to be proper coaches and learn how to deal with people before we can ever even step on the lane. Then you look at some of the coaching that some, you know, some people go through. There are so many different courses you can take as a, as a coach. You know, you can go through Kegel, or some people are Bull U people, uh, some people are USBC people. Which I don't know about paying money to not learn anything. But I trained with um, Ron Hatfield, who's a gold coach out of Ohio. He's probably one of the most knowledgeable. Um, just on lane USBC coaches that there is out there. 
um, he had a huge impact on the way that I deal with people and 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 how I approach the game. Um, I have been very blessed with the people that I've worked with. I think I've I've gotten to work with um, Rex Byron, dear friend of mine who's passed. Um, boy, um, oh Mo, yeah, who has also passed. I feel, boy, this is getting a little a little depressing here. Um, you know, knowing and working with Ron Hatfield and Ron Hicklin from CTD. Um, I have an incredible mentor team around me. Getting to work with Dell now. Um, you know, unfortunately I didn't get to go down with Team Canada, but I'm planning to go down at some point and get some more training with them. I want to do their, their master training uh, that they offer. Um, I have been very lucky, but it also, I think it's safe to say that I've spent a small fortune in my training. As a, <laughs> you don't say, um, as a coach, you know, I, I've also had to become an IPSIA certified driller, um, certified fitter. I've had to learn about ball dynamics. I have to learn about things that aren't my specialty to know either that I don't know enough and I need to send somebody to someone who is more skilled um, or to know when to interject and, and when to talk to people. Um, I can honestly say since I'd say probably 2013, like I, no joke, I've spent more than 10,000 hours. You know, I'd pro I, I've always said, you know, probably close to 20,000 hours, but I'm, I mean, I'm on 10 years now. Ooh, I'm getting old. <laughs> Excuse me. I had a little, a little of a clamp thinking of my, uh, past friends. Um, I'm also really lucky. One of the people that I have in my mentor group um, who I have a lot of respect for is Mark Bufa. Uh, he is an incredible businessman. What he does um, with Bufa Distribution, he and his father, um, that, is a, that is a man who knows, who knows his business. He's very, 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 uh, very talented businessman. Um, so I've, I've had some really... I've been lucky to have some really good mentors, but I have spent a lot of time training. Good Lord. Sorry? Why do I share all this? Because it's important to get... Sorry. Um, I share this because in youth bowling, it's important to make sure that your coaches are certified. Um, you know, there are lots of people out there who call themselves coaches who are very talented and know lots of stuff. But it takes more than just knowing about what's on the lanes to become a true coach. Um, and it's also, as a parent, uh, it's very gratifying knowing, like, for, um, for to be a coach in Canada, I go through fingerprinting and nationwide searches similar to, I guess it would be an FBI check. Um, they have the option of doing uh, DNA. They have like all this, this stuff that we have to go through before they'll even talk to us to allow us to become a coach. Um, and I'm, I'm totally okay with that because it keeps um, improper elements away from our youth. As I say, youth is the most important part of our game. It's the only way our game is going to grow. It's the only way our game is going to stay. Um, so making sure that you ha you're working with certified coaches is very important. Now, there are USBC. You, you don't ha just have to say, you know what, uh, it's USBC or nothing. Um, but accredited, qualified coaches, coaches who have had background checks, who've gone through... Um, lots of training, who work, work with universities. These are the coaches that you know are going to have uh, had the most experience and know how to best work with uh, youth bowlers, especially uh, late teen, early 20. Um, so your USBC, Kegel Master Certified, I know they go through a lot of training on the lanes. I'm not sure what certification they have for, um, for background checks and such. Um, I know that uh, over in Europe they have their own, I think it's the EFB. Um, they have quite a, a comprehensive coaching program over there to get things going. I think Canada has probably, I don't want to say the 
most stringent, but we have one heck of a stringent coaching program. If you want to coach, it's easy to get in, but it just takes a little bit of time, and you got to be willing to put the work in. It's not just a – I'm making it sound terrible. I'm sorry. I actually really love coaching. There are a few people that make it difficult, but there are always are. Um, but as a coach, you have to be willing to put in the time to work with the people. Um, things happen, and you can and you can get pulled away, but you have to go in knowing that you're looking at dedicating some time um, to these bowlers. And as parents, you should be wanting them to dedicate this time, get the latest training, the latest certifications, the latest knowledge, uh, so they can best help your growing bowler. Um, now, the other thing that's very important with youth bowling, and I'll get you your, your stuff. I saw your stuff on the chat there. Guys, I'm really sorry. I'm going to get to it in just a second here. Um, um, sorry, I'll, I'll get to it in just a second. Um, there's a code of conduct in youth bowling that's very, very important. Um, the people who are running the events have to carry themselves at a high standard. Um, you have to be comfortable as a, as a parent leaving your child, your youth, your young adult with these people. And you have to be very comfortable that um, they're going to look out for the best interests of the people who are bowling in the event, um, which could mean sanctioning. It could mean how they treat people, um, their language, um, you know, smoking and drugs, alcohol, any number of things that could affect uh, the youth, you want to make sure that there is a code of conduct in place for not only the, the players, but for the people running the event. Because uh, they, you know, you're paying your hard-earned money to them, um, either as a youth or a parent of a youth or multiple youth. You want to make sure that they are going to run a, a safe and uh, fast, efficient event. Um, you also want to make sure, and this is one that a lot of people don't think about when they see the scholarship money going up. Who's insuring that scholarship money? It's all great to say I'm going to put $500 in the bank for somebody or I'm going to put $200 in the bank for somebody. Uh, but I know in Canada when we run um, sanctioned events, that scholarship money, you know, everyone knows exactly where it, go, where it is. We have to report to the Canadian government to support Canada just like every, everyone else. Any monies that go anywhere that are, you know, we, we are responsible for that information. Um, but when you're having an event run, you know, you want to make sure that when you go to go to school, when you go to go to school, that that money's actually going to be there for, for you. If you're counting on it and it just doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, too bad. It just, it's not there anymore. Um, you know, further than that, what if you don't go to school? What happens to that money? Do they just get to keep it? Is it put back into a prize fund? Is it paid out to you in cash? Um, there's a lot of things that you have to figure out when it comes to scholarship money. Um, and you also have to make sure that that is done properly. Once again, with that sanctioned versus unsanctioned events. Uh, because if that's paid out improperly, even though you're not the athlete who's getting paid, that problem could come back to bite you. It could end up disqualifying you from NCAA uh, competition. And potentially it could have you out of university, which would be awful. Like, that would seriously suck. Um, so, yeah, youth bowling. It's important to know, like, as, as parents and as coaches, we often look at, and look at events and say, hey, you know, I know this event's coming up. I heard about this event there. I heard about that ev uh, event here. But it's very important for you to, um, to do a little, bit, a little bit of digging for the protection of the athlete. And that's what it always should be about, protecting the athlete. Um, you know, either protecting them from themselves or protecting them from others, or protecting them for those who want to take advantage of them. So just you know, take your time when you're looking at events. Make sure that you know exactly where the money is going to be going, um, exactly where it's going to be protected, so that you can guarantee that money is going to be there later. Make sure the people running the event are going to be above board. They're going to be you know, kind, friendly. They're not going to scream obscenities at the top of their lungs. 
You know, you don't want any of that kind of stuff. This is about youth, right? It's about youth bowling. We had enough screaming with strikes. That's what we want. That's where we want the, the screaming to be. Let's go over to the questions here. I was just looking into coaching this week. That's awesome, Dead Polymers. I highly recommend it. Um, I don't know what area you are in, but if you want to learn from one of the best, um, Ron Hatfield, go to Ohio. The events, he's running events there all the time. Um, I cannot say enough good things about his program. One of the things I like is he teaches you what you need to pass the exam and the information that's in the book, but then he also uh, he puts his real-world experience into it and says, you know what, I might agree with this or I might disagree with this under this circumstance or, or what have you. And it really gives you a different insight um, into how he's coached. Um, and he's a super nice guy. Super nice guy. Um, so, yeah. If you want to get into it, if and it, you're at all can get near him, I highly recommend it. Um, WrestleMania, oh, Vincent, you're the most qualified coach I've ever seen. Anyone who says otherwise needs a reality check. You know, you know what? Um, it would be very easy for me to say that I'm a very, you know, I'm, I'm the best coach or whatever, but I'm not. Not even close. There are so many qualified, incredible coaches out there who work with bowlers who may forget more than I will ever know. Um, I take pride in the amount of work that I've done, though, and the amount of knowledge that I've gathered and tried to put together and, and share with people freely. Um, and uh, knock on wood, I will never have to, to stop doing that. Um, you know, I just want to share information with the world. There's so many people out there who want so much money um, just to learn things that once you hear them, they're really just common sense. But you just have to find a, a different way to to get it through your head, you know. Different people learn different ways. I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm a visual learner or I'm a, a this learner or that learner. It's just some people interpret data differently. Some people need it put stated to them different ways. Um Oh, you're really close to the ITRC. Oh, um, boy, oh boy, that's a good training ground. Wow. Um, because I think you've got uh, Stephen Padilla there, uh, who I just saw at Bowl Expo a couple of weeks ago. Um, they have incredible lanes and incredible uh, setup for learning from. Uh, that's kind of cool. That's really awesome. Um, yeah, go to the ITRC and get trained. That's a good place to train. Um, yeah, no, I never say I'm a good... The ITRC has a ton of good coaches. Rod Ross might have been one of the best coaches I've ever seen. Mo Pinnell, probably the most intelligent man I've ever met when it comes to bowling. I am neither of them, not even close. Um, I do appreciate the kind words, though, Vincent, a lot. Um, I am just, I'm just a coach trying to share stuff. Um, I'm just a coach trying to share stuff. I did have a good weekend drilling, though. I, had a, I drilled a few pieces for people at a youth event that was local to me. Uh, and I think I had a second place and a first place and a second team. Uh, like the uh, Baker team event, I think I drilled for people on, on uh, the the second place team there. So I'm very happy about that. I always love drilling for for kids, um, for kids for youth athletes. I'm really bad at that. I shouldn't call them kids. They are they are youth athletes. That is my one of my old guard things is calling everybody kids because I'm so old. I'm an old, decrepit man. Um, I wonder. Do, do, do. You know what we haven't done this episode? We haven't gone to the internet. I don't think I have a nameplate for the internet. I'm sorry, guys. Um...
Can you hear me now? Oh, that's, oh, that's a good face, yeah. yeah. All right, let's try that. Let's try that. You guys probably didn't hear any of that good stuff. We're here to sound! Yay! Yeah, I told you. We have a bit of a different, different setup this week. Uh, one, one of the cameras was, was acting really weird, weird last week. week. It kept, you know, you, you saw, saw it, it kept shutting, shutting off randomly, randomly just, just doing its own thing. thing. Uh, we, uh, we got a new setup, setup now, and uh, of course, course the other, other microphone, microphone turned off. Because, because why, why not? not? <laughs> why not? Um, so, um, so let's, let's go, go back, back over, over the internet. internet. I, can I can talk about, about that again. At least everyone can hear me this time. It was the Lucy. Um, this weekend won by EJ and Deandra Aspati. It's nice to see Deandra win something. She's really awesome. Um, I uh, talked with Deandra a few years ago uh, when she f she and Jason first had uh, IAB, um, and they were looking at uh, really doing a lot of intense high-end training for athletes. Um, but we haven't seen a lot from her lately. Now she's won with EJ. Um, the scoring pace for this, as I was probably showing you guys last time, you probably saw this, um, the scoring pace was just insane. Um, what input? We're here on the internet. You guys can still hear me, right? And we have two audio inputs. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, um, Wes Malott and Shannon there. Look at that, plus 475. That is an insane scoring pace for, for this event. Um, you think about that, that is 237 each. Plus 237 each. Um, split over the team. That's a huge score. Um, Wes was, good lord, 1764 for seven games. That's not a scoring pace. That was a pin slaughter. Um, yeah, we've also got, you know, Shannon and Bill, um, Matt Russo. So this was just during qualifying. Like, this scoring pace was very, very high. Uh, you look down here, uh, 111th place before they got to a negative number. So plus four for at 111. Um, the scoring pace was high. And then you look at, you know, this didn't matter. Look at this who's who on here. Take a look at the who's who for the top eight. EJ and DeAndre, we've got Butters and Stephanie Johnson. We've got Chris Vi, who's incredible. Um, Brittany Cote, Brittany's really good. Um, Ryan and Dasha, that's a couple of major winners. Like those are, those are no slouches. Um, of course, Wes and Shannon and Bill and Shannon, who led qualifying. AJ Johnson and Aaron McCarthy, Andrew Anderson and Jordan Richards. Uh, sorry, Jordan Richard. I always put an S on the bottom of that. Um, that is some pretty insane. Like, very, very high scoring. And a who's who who made it through there. Um, and, you know, it's nice to see EJ win again. He's... I don't want to say he's struggled this year because he's had a lot of showings. He just seemed to get a lot of bad breaks. And, um, you know, it's nice to... Oh, my chair went through the internet. Um, and, uh, it's you know, it's just nice to see him win. I'm sure I'd like to see somebody from Brunswick the Brunswick brands win. I mean, Jacob's right there at the top. I'm very happy about that. So is Ryan. Uh, so is Dasha. So is Bill O'Neill. Like, there's a lot of Brunswick guys up there that make me very happy because it, you know, it shows that the equipment is is doing very, very well. Um, also on the internet. What else do we got on the internet? Oh! PBA League Program Certification Program. Um, so they're finally starting to roll out the first parts of the PBA League Bowling Certification Program. I am excited about this. Um, I don't know why I am though, because I don't know if it will be av um, available to us in Canada, but I am very excited with this. Um, it's gonna, 
it's going to do one of two things. One of, one of two things. Uh, it's going to force USB-C to look at their standards and practices and look at what the bowlers are saying and what they're asking for and kind of reevaluate how they're doing things, which is always good. Um, challenging established norms is always a good way to, to create growth. Um, or the PBA League program certification is going to be miles and away better than the USB-C, and they're either going to replace them or force them to evolve. So either way, it's good for everybody. Um, the bowlers who are really interested in the PBA League Bowler Program, which is going to be a smaller amount. Everybody thinks that, you know, oh, you know, every league's going to turn over to PBA and blah, blah, blah. But from what I've seen, it's going to be more of a sport program, so it's probably going to only affect 10 to 20 percent of our of the active league bowlers out there. Um, but those are the bowlers who go out and bowl leagues. They're the ones who um, they inspire bowlers to try harder tournaments, harder events, harder patterns, um, to go get coaching. So it, it's, uh, I, I think it's a win-win for, for the industry. I think it's good. Um, you know, with all that's gone, in, gone on with USBC in the last year, um, I think it's great. It's going to force them to look at how they do things, and it's going to force them to evolve. And I think it's only... There is no, um, no losing for the, for the average bowler. You're going to have somebody or you're going to have somebody else. Um, but it's going to force them to treat the average bowler better and, and cater a little more to the needs of who, who needs it. All right, that was the Lucy. Let's go, go back, back to, to this, this camera, camera here. here. I'm hoping, hoping everybody, everybody uh, can hear, hear that. that. Now, let's, let's see, see if let's see if the there we go. Now we fix. I bet you we fixed that double audio input now. Let's head over to the drill room. We got some work to do. Let's see here. We're gonna head over to the spinner this time. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's not the ball that's currently on the spinner. That's me. That's the, well, this is interesting. There we go. That was weird. <laughs> um, you're going to have to let me know if there's questions because I'm going to be over at the spinner. And tonight, we are looking at. Oh, man. Everything okay? Yep. Give me one second. Do, 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 do. Existing one. Boom! We're headed to the workbench. I don't know why that disappeared. Boop! Okay, so let's head back. Hoping everyone can still hear me okay. If you turn your audio up, you can probably hear me. Oh, if you're not on. Alright, alright, so here we go. We're heading back here. And tonight. Look! It's the ball that everyone loves to hate on, but we use the bonus from Radical. Uh, this is our benchmark ball that we use in all of our videos. Um, but you can see, she'd be a little shiny. And look at that, she'd be shiny all the way around. So we're gonna check out this product from Neotech. This is their Hook It Surface Pro 2000. And it removes oil, dirt, belt marks, and leaves a 1500 to 2000 surface and brings your ball back to life. So, what better way to figure out how it works? 
than to use it on a ball that we use all the time. Now, one of the things that I kind of liked about this is if you've got a ton of pads laying around, like I do, um, especially the old Avalon ones that I never used because um, I've got all my awesome true cut ones instead, um, they got this really nice back on it. And uh, the guys were telling me at uh, Neotech that when you're using this, actually, just apply it to the back of these used pads here and use that rather than using a cloth, getting it too dirty, too messed up. That way, uh, you know, if you want to throw it out at the end, you, you've gotten double life out of your product. I'm just going to open this sucker up. Give it a shake. Ah! And let's give this a try. First, I'm just going to wet this pad with water until it's water. Gross. Well, people will say you used something in there. You didn't do it. So, now we're going to take some of this stuff. Oh, good lord, look at that. That is neat. That's kind of a... It reminds me of, like, the storm uh, step... Kind of got like a liquidy to it. Let's give this a try here. Ew, it's spraying everywhere. It's so gross. Ew, it's spraying Ooh. everywhere. I can feel a little it's bit of so pull gross. against the back here and a little bit of heat created. I can't tell if it's by friction or by whatever's in this. Six, seven, eight, ooh, nine, ten. My hand just touched the ball, and I could feel a little bit of uh, a little bit of grip there. All right. So how do we look? Still got some shine to it. Ooh. You can hear the squeakiness. see some of the material, I can feel it on my fingers. It has almost like a little bit of an abrasive feel to it. Uh, let's compare it to the other side. Ooh, yeah, you can tell a big difference there. There's the front. There's the back. Huh. Yeah, there's that. And you can see the inconsistency of lane shine. One of the things that we don't talk about a lot. One of the things that is bad about lane shine is that it's so inconsistent, it causes inconsistent reaction. That's why we like to clean the ball. Huh. It's a little bit of squeakiness. There's a lot on this side. Interesting. But, what about a pro ball? Or hybrid. Well, we just happen to have this deviate collision right here. And uh, I want to take it to, take it to 2000 surface anyway. So, let's give it some juice. Gunk off. All right, so let's take a look. Squeaky. Oh, that's a 
the sound. Now let's take a look at the other side. Compare. This is our front at 2,000. Oh, you can see that light up there, the shine on coming off that. You can see the difference when you come away from it. So yeah, we're seeing some difference in surface. Now, to be fair, let's grab us a 2000 pad. I know I have a nice 2000 pad here. There it is. Ah. The used pads are always in front of you, but the really nice, crisp, new, true cut pads never work in front of you. And then I got to pop my sanding block. On the sanding block. And these are available at Innovative, uh, hopefully again someday. Uh, we were talking to the guys at uh, Vice and Innovative at Bowl Expo. Um, and they ordered a whole whack of them. And unfortunately, they got destroyed. A pallet got broken. And they got destroyed. Um, so I know they were looking at doing them again. But, you know, the, the easiest way to guarantee, I'm just putting some true cut conditioner on my pad here. The easiest way to guarantee they'll get them back in is to go and talk to them and order them. Two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Where's my... Oh, shoot. There it is. Right. And let's give it a look. 2,000 versus 2,000. All right. So this is the back 2,000 with a true cut pad. And that's the liquid 2000. So you can see there's still a little bit more shine. A little bit more shine in the liquid 2000 than the true cut 2000. So let's give this one more shot here. Just make sure I'm not what we want to know. It definitely cleaned the ball nicely. It got all the stuff off, especially in the bonus, with all the uh, all the measurement lines on it. It definitely took all those off. And don't forget, when you're using your true cut conditioner, don't just leave your pads to get dry and gross. Make sure that you rinse them out. Let me care. So just in case there, there was a problem with that, we're going to get ourselves a fluffy cloth here, just a regular fluffy cloth. Really good shape. In case it settles, we want to make sure. I know the stuff that I work with normally doesn't have a chance to settle. Oh, come on, open. Open. All right. Same thing, liquidy. I'm gonna try spreading it all over before I start. Applying it like a polish. polished it like a polished 2000. So yeah, you definitely see a different, uh, a different kind of surface out of it. It's not going to be, uh, maybe it's the bubble I got. 
Um, I didn't see it as dark as the um, as a real pad, um, but this can be applied by hand. So if we can get you around 2,000, shouldn't be too bad. Very interesting, though. I'll try this one more time. Gotta take the cap off. That's why we check the products. Make sure there's not anything funny in there. Turning it over to try to get as thick a thing of it as I can. It is, it reminds me more of the step three, which was the the higher grit from Storm. Maybe I'm just not using enough. Or anything? Sure. Uh, so, Justin, I've tried. Uh, I've tried off both my phone and now my laptop, and I still don't have audio. Says John B. But I'm not sure why, because I get audio with my phone. Um, have you turned it off and on again? Asked somebody. Trusty old crack iPad to the rescue. He says. So that was it. That's what we've got so far. So some people can hear me and some can't? Well, I, John B. was having trouble, but he got to his iPad and it fixed it. Okay. So you can see there's some material coming off like, um, like a compound. And you can see when I did it this time, it's much, it's much duller. So I think maybe mine just had some settling. You can see that's the true 2000. You can see just a little bit more shine on here. This is more like a wet 2000 as opposed to a drier 2000, which is what you get from the, the CTD pads when they're brand new. Uh, but very interesting. As something that you can apply by hand, it's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, there's lots of people out there who polish equipment um, and don't like pads. So this, this could be something they could do to, to uh, refresh a ball without having to use pads, without making all the dirt and everything. It's an interesting product. So, oh, look at my hands, they're so groovy. Uh, can't go back to a computer with dirty hands, that's just gross. Once I get back to the computer here, we're going to go to my favorite time. We're going to go to answering questions from the interwebs. I am back. Ooh. And you can see through my chest. Oh my god, there's bowling balls. No. Uh, let's turn that one back on. Hey, there we go. Take this off. All right. Whew, that was fun. So, and you know what? That's one of the reasons why we, we take a look at these products. Um, away from manufacturers, away from everybody else, and we let them stand on their own. We can compare them apples to apples. And, you know, we saw a product there from Neotac that gives a type of 2000 surface. Um, I would have liked to have seen it be a little bit, um, a little bit more matte, but it is a liquid, so it's much more like the step polish, or the step compounds that we see from Storm. So, but, as I said, being able to apply it by hand rather than needing a spinner is pretty cool. Um, let's head to 
the interwebs. I'm gonna head to the interwebs here. Let's see here. Dupe. Uh, and thank you everyone who's watching this evening. I really appreciate it. Um, if you watch our videos, don't forget to check us out on our other social media platforms. Don't forget to check out some of our sponsors. Um, and some of the people that we just like. Uh, if you remember last week's show, <coughs> the infamous Clinton incident, uh, my friend... <coughs> I completely butchered my friend Colin's name. Uh, <coughs> but in my defense, I'm terrible with names. Um, but Colin does the uh, house hack bowling. He does the uh, pants and skorts. Uh, house hack, sorry, not house hack bowling, house hack apparel. And very important about that. House hack apparel. Um, they do the skorts and the pants and the shorts. I uh, can't say enough good things about those pants. They're always, they're just awesome. Especially like this weekend when it was 36 degrees and we had 90 kids in a bowling center. It got warm down there. Um, that's a good time for skorts and light pants and stuff. Um, you know, don't forget to check out other stuff that we that we put up there too. I know sometimes people just fast forward by them, but they are uh, people who we believe in. Um, things like Eileen's Bowling Buddies. Um, we use those a lot in our training. We think they're very good. I recommend them uh, as a national coach to my national players. I have in the past. Um, I still do. I think they're awesome. I am bowling. They do our jerseys. They take care of all that stuff. Um, they always take such good care of us. So, you know, if you have a chance, check out some of the people um, that we throw up there because it, you know, it not only helps us out, but it really does help them out too because... You know, they can see what people, if you're not buying, you can let them know what you want, you know, or, or things that you like or dislike. It just lets us know. Ah, do, 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 comments. All right, let's head to Reddit. Uh, boop. Don't get a lot of interaction on Reddit, and that's okay. Um, we always appreciate it, though, when you check out our stuff. Um, once again, we have uh, we have a Reddit on a lot of the time. We have a, uh, what we call our live lounge. You can go in and talk to us live. If I've got Reddit open, you can talk to us directly. Um, but we also post all of our videos there. Uh, just one place to have them all where you can talk about them, put uh, comments specifically. Mod mail. No one likes mod mail. Oh, we got lots of upvotes this week. No comments on Reddit, but that's okay. Because there's more than enough of them on YouTube. From Corbin, glad to see you're back. I've missed the show. We've missed you as well. Um, as you saw, we got our big bowling stuff. So looking forward to see uh, how your big bowling stuff is still. Um, WrestleMania Rocks. I wanted to share on the good old Book of Faces. Oh, yeah! That reminds me. Uh, Book of Faces, uh, got to spread the word somehow on my favorite bowling review channel. Thank you, Vincent. And speaking of that, we're going to give away a jersey. Um, it's a really easy one to enter tonight. All you got to do on Facebook, either during the show tonight or before next week, just share... Um, I guess you can't do it before the show's over. After the show's over tonight, just share this show um, and post a comment on it. Anything you want, um, please keep it PG. Um, <coughs> especially if you put a question up there. Uh, and anyone who shares it and uh, shares it on Facebook, puts a comment on it on YouTube, are going to be entered. And one of you guys is going to win uh, one of our authentic jerseys um, we're gonna take it we're literally gonna autograph it we're gonna box it up and ship it to you uh, if it is a long way away like you are in Europe or Greece or Australia we may ask you to help with the shipping costs um, because we we don't want it to get lost but we want to make sure you get it there <laughs> um, and we're poor let's be honest I'm a coach and a pro shop guy we're all poor 
Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure we're just going to send you, send a, you wherever you are a free jersey. So share it. Make a comment here on, fa on um, YouTube. Like it. All those good things. And, uh, yeah, next week we're going to give away a jersey. Um, and the cool thing is, is we have, I think, what do I have? 20 extra jerseys that we're going to, that we're looking at giving away? 15 or 20? So, uh, we're going to make a list of them and we're going to actually let you choose your prize. So you can go through and check it out and, um, kind of figure things out. And, uh, I think... Probably for the next few weeks, we're going to do this every week. So if you, you know, share, like, comment, uh, and make sure that you're subscribed, very important, subscribed, um, we're just going to start giving away jerseys every week. Why not? Um, well, you maybe not every week. I don't want to go broke. But, you know, I have a whole bunch of jerseys that I'd like to give away. I want people to have awesome jerseys. Um... So, yeah, don't forget that. Share, like, subscribe, comment. Um, give us your firstborn. No, we don't want any more firstborns. No. Take our firstborn. Yeah, that, that, that one. Um, let's see here. What else do we got? And thank you very much, Vincent, for those kind words. I very much appreciate it uh, every time you post things. Um, Paul Meredith talking about the swag show off. I'm a staffer for swag. Um, are the best. Uh, are covers are the best um the show off quite, certainly had a lot of performance out of that cover um it's funny the day i think it was the day after this was released um our cold-hearted handsome devil there riley russell um just shot the lights out i think he shot it was 1050 or 1070 something um and he was throwing the swag show off during it like it was he really likes it. So um, if you're a staffer, if you're a um, – if you are a swag person, do you know who's a swag person? Our friend, AEW star, J.D. Drake. He is a swag guy, uh, loves his sh his uh, swagger show off. Shout out to him. He uh, – we're really, really hoping – and I'm talking like knocking on, on the noggin here – um, AEW, uh, which obviously I'm a big, I just got this thing about touching my chest today. <coughs> um, I, uh, they're coming to Buffalo and Toronto. So I'm hoping I'm going to go see, uh, JD for, uh, you know, three or four shows and, uh, maybe we can get some, some in-person interview. We can talk some bowling stuff. I wonder if I can steal him away and get him to pack his bowling stuff when he comes. You think he? You think he'd want to go to a bowling center? Be fun. Could be. Could be a lot of fun. Good lord, we could we could have a show off. Him versus me, battle of the uh, battle of the superstars. So I will bring a, su a superstar to battle him. Maybe. Uh... Hey, Deja Bowler! Nice. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's see what else we got going on here on the internet for questions. Um, Scotty Thompson, are you guys going to review the Hammer Black Widow Visible? Probably not. Oh, no! No! Damn you, camera! turned off again I swear I swear I swear I swear we're gonna get this figured out every camera seems to hate us every camera seems to hate me it's okay doesn't matter not like I work with them for a living what was I talking about uh, oh uh, yeah we're talking about J JD uh, I think it would be really awesome if we could get something going there. Uh, oh, who else we got there? Sea Lance, awesome. Hello. Uh, I love uh, Rich. I love their equipment too. Definitely best for my style. Uh, signing with Swag was the best thing I've ever done. That's awesome. Glad to hear. Um, 
not everyone needs to sign to a company because um, I think that everyone should try a little bit of everything. But if you found a, co a company that has a range of equipment that meets your style, power to you. I did it. I've been with Brunswick for a long, long time because their stuff fits my game. Um, and I've had options to move elsewhere. And it's just what matches my game the best. So, you know, good on you. Um, is Scoops coming back anytime soon? Um, yes. I think we said the next two weeks we're hoping to uh, get him and Wayne on so we can just, you know, talk and have ourselves a good time. We do have more um, reviews coming up. I know that we've got the new... Uh, we haven't done the Crypto or the Trailblazer yet. We've got the Melee Carbon and the Paragon Hybrid and the, um, oh, the Quantum Evo Hybrid coming. we got so much stuff coming. Um, so we're going to be in and around the studio. So hopefully, you know, got to find something else to knock on other than wood. Um, yes, he's going to be back. Uh, let's see here. Let's just give that a close. And we'll go back to on here. <coughs> um, but no, we're probably not going to review that, Scotty Thompson. Um, it's not a ball that a lot of people have asked about. Um, doesn't make it uh, any less awesome. Still a cool ball. Uh, it's just not one that I think we're going to be reviewing. But I appreciate you asking. Um, Corbin, glad to see you touch on these smaller brands. The swag video is neat. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Um, Shannon, you guys are awesome. Thanks for everything. Question, uh, when doing ball review videos, could you elaborate more on specific drillings on a new ball versus the same drilling on your benchmark ball? Um, yes. So we've talked about this. I'll get to your second question in a second. We've talked this, uh, about this before in Arsenal Selection. Um, I have a, um, a chart. Let me see if I can find it here. Famous last words. Because, <clears throat> um, of course, it doesn't have to be, you know, exactly where we'd want it. Personal construction. Boom! Good lord. <laughs> that might have been a little bit too big. Um, let's just put that right there. Um, so you can see there, we uh, we often use, we, we call back to the uh, arsenal construction sheet. This is based on... Um, a lot of what they do in creating tournament arsenals for um, in the past for Kegel. Um, so different drill angles, different val angles, different pin distances, um, they affect when the ball rolls, how it rolls, and so on and so forth. So, forth. so we're going to get into it very briefly um, because I think we've, we've covered it a little bit before, but I want you to I want you to, to understand what's going on. So with the drill angle, uh, the drill angle is how far the ball is going to go before it really wants to spin up. The lower the number, the sooner it wants to spin up. The later the number, the later it's going to want to spin up. People with you can see here for benchmark balls, they all stay pretty much the same. They're going to be the middle of the road. Um, so they're around 50, um, 35 to 50 degrees. So it's about the middle of the drill angle variation, the, the uh, amount from lowest to highest that you want to go, because there's certain numbers you don't want to go over. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I believe it's 90. Uh, well, technically it's 90. Let's just go with that for now. Um, you don't want to go over 90, so 50 is in the middle. Drill angles are, the lower the drill angle, the more the ball is going to want to start using its energy. So on, as a benchmark ball, you want something that is going to be, use a little bit of the energy, see the middle of the lane. Uh, we call it 
we call it the middle of the lane, the mid lane. Um, it's where it's that area at the end of the pattern where the ball is transitioning off the oil through the through the oil that's been carried down. Um, it often starts very. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for just, just one second. Um, it starts off very generally in a house shot, very muddy. Um, that's why they say that it's, there's usually free friction to the outside. There's a lot of dry, but there's also a lot of oil. So you can miss a lot, and you can just bounce it off the friction and make it come in. In tournament arsenals, you don't have that, you don't have that luxury. You have to make sure that where you, you're throwing the ball to the right spot because if you miss, the ball is going to overreact or underreact. So once again, in our benchmark, um, in our benchmark layout, we're looking at things that are going to be kind of in the middle. You can see for our rev dominant player, somebody who has less speed but way tons of rev, we have drill angles that go up 80. So we want to get as much distance before it starts using that energy. Um, for myself as a low tilt bowler, a lot of my layouts that Mo used to give me were at 90 degrees. The maximum distance we could possibly create with drill angle. <clears throat> now we're looking at the, pin, the second number there, the pin to pap number. That's how much flare it's going to create. The smaller that number is, the less it's going to flare the more it's going to retain energy, which means in some cases it's going to go too far down the lane. Um, and then it goes up to three inches, three and a half inches, which is maximum flare. And then it, as it approaches six and three quarter inches, it actually goes low flare again. So you have to pick pin distances for the amount of flare that you want to create in that ball position, as well as based on your bowling style. So you can see here for our speed dominant players, you see a lot of four inch pin to paps because they are very strong flaring. They need as much flare as they can to get as much hook as they possibly can. Um, our match player you see four and a half, five, they can change the flare a little bit, make it flare a little bit later. With our rev dominant player, you'll see a lot of fives, 5.25s, almost sixes trying to get the ball to flare way down the lane or as little as possible now you'll also see a lot of rev dominant players with pins that go the other direction uh, in our early videos we used to you used to see me use a lot of pins in the uh, one two and a half two and a quarter three inch um, and though that's specifically to retain tilt for the bowler that's a, a little bit over technical but just saying that, once again, that pin placement, that pin to pap, is very important based on the style of your bowling. Lastly, we have the val angle. The val angle is how quickly that ball is going to change direction when it decides to change direction. Um, 20 is supposed to be the lowest, and 70 is supposed to be, or sorry, the fastest, lowest number, fastest response. 70... I think they said, I think I've seen it up to 118 degree val angle. You really shouldn't go past um, 90 degrees on your val either. Um, I kind of subscribe to the rule of not going past 75 degrees on your val angle. Um, and that is <clears throat> the higher the number, the slower it's going to respond to friction, the slower it's going to make the motion. Um, the lower the number, the faster it's going to want to change direction. The more hockey stickish you're going to, you're going to, the ball is going to want to be. So, as you can see on here, and I know this has been really long-winded for you, um, but you can see the benchmark. Our numbers are middle of the road, middle of the road, and then depending on if it's a, a short, medium, or long pattern, we either want a fast. You know, it's going to be a little bit stronger changing direction down the lane or it's going to be really slow and that's pretty much the same across every bowler when you get to the ball up faster response we've got some distance some later flare but still some fast response with our val angle with our burn ball you can see we're looking at 
longer distances before it wants to use its energy, longer pin distances so it wants to flare later, and longer val angles so it doesn't want to change direction as quickly. So when they're super burned up and there's tons of friction everywhere, it's not going to respond as quickly to it. It's going to be able to get through it and get down lane before it makes a change of direction. And to know which ball you want to use for those, you can see on the bottom of the chart here, we've kind of laid them out really easily for RG ranges, differential ranges, um, just to try to make it easier for bowlers. And if you want a physical copy of this, we're happy to give you one. If you email us at lanesidereviews at live.com, um, we will gladly send you a digital copy of this that you can use. Um, but yeah, that is... That is why we use different layouts, because we want the ball to react different, or have the potential to react differently in different places. Now, we also use a lot of surface. Um, if you look at that arsenal construction there, we also put down surfaces, because surface, um, it, we usually say it um, controls 60 to 70% of the total ball motion on the lane. So that surface is also going to help you get that motion that you want and get the ball to do something different from each other piece. So you'll know that your benchmark does one thing, your ball up does another thing, your burn ball does another thing. Um, Jeffrey, glad, nice to hear it. Richard agreed. I tried Rotogrip and Motive. Max struggled with each. Um, we'll never say it's bad equipment. Just didn't match up. 100%. Absolutely. Since Radical released the crypto, I'm waiting to see for a Doge or a Shiba ball. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take I'll I'll take the Doge. It's gonna be silver, and it's gonna have um, Elon Musk on one side and a, and uh, a dog on the other. Um, so let's see here. Uh, and the second part was lastly, there are plenty of people doing storm reviews. That's why I love your channel. We have enough storm stuff. We want to see more radical, more Brunswick. It's difficult to find good reviews for these products. Appreciate it. Um, we'd still love to do more storm and roto stuff. I mean, yes, there are a few people out there doing. There are quite a few people out there doing it. Um, but because we want to be, we would love to be able to give a more um, in-depth look at equipment, so people could more closely identify this ball versus this one and that one versus that one. That's all we ever want to do. It's why we have that system at the end where we have the performance breakdown where we say, you know, it's this amount longer or this amount shorter, this amount more hook. So that when you go to buy a ball and you say, you know what, I need a ball that hooks X amount more, you can say, I put this ball versus this ball. I know what it's going to do. Um... <clears throat> Let's see here. Do, do, do. So thank you for the kind words there, Shannon Roberts. Much appreciated. Scotty Thompson loves our videos, and we love Scotty Thompson. Um, um, and I think, yeah, I think that's about, those are all the ones I'm going to go through this week, I think. Um, there's always comments out there, but some of them are not always constructive. And I prefer to have constructive com comments on here. <clears throat> so, we're coming to the end of the show, guys, where we talk about everything that you want to. You're on here for a reason, so anything you want to ask, uh, we've got, uh, I'd say, 10 minutes left, and then we're going to call it a night. So, um, anything that you want to talk about, just throw it in the comments there. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I've had a lot of fun. Um, as I said, youth bowling is something that I'm very passionate about. You can probably tell by the way I talk about it. Um, I'm just passionate about bowling in general, but I feel like if we take the time to um, raise our athletes correctly, give them the proper code of conduct, we give them the proper um, culture, <clears throat> we create respectful youth bowlers, um, it makes everyone's job easier going forward to... Um, from local coaches to um, university coaches, national coaches, wherever you, you want to be. It just makes them better people in general. Those who learn to be respectful and, um, you know, I don't, uh, I don't want to choose a religion or anything and use anybody's quotes, but, you know, I think probably the best one I can think of is 
from Bill S. Preston and Ted Theodore Logan where they said, we just have to be awesome to each other and party on. Like, if we just were, instead of trying to be mean to each other, try to cause issues for each other, if we just take the time and the energy and put it into a more um, a more constructive place, I think we all grow and we all end up at a better place in the end, rather than trying to tear each other down. So, I think, though, that is just about it for questions tonight. I think that's really awesome. <clears throat> you guys have had some great questions. I'm really sorry, John B., that you had to go to the old, the old cracked iPod. Uh, iPad, sorry. Um, but uh, we'll get that figured out for next time. I'm going to figure out this disc camera here to keep shutting off. Um, then we're going to figure out the audio issues. But um, I've enjoyed talking to everyone tonight. I always do. Um, once again, we're going to give away a shirt next week on the show. And it's very simple. All you got to do is you got to like this episode, um, be subscribed to the channel, and uh, put a comment underneath the show here on YouTube, and just share it on Facebook, um, which is easy because you can do all of those from YouTube. And, um, yeah, next week, somebody who did that, they're getting a free jersey. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know about the rest of you. Um, next week on the show, um, we may have uh, Old Guy Wayne and Scoops. If not, we are going to be looking at the new equipment that's coming in. Um, hopefully we'll have at least three, if not five, pieces to look at. And um, we're going to look at another product from Neotac. <clears throat> They've got some interesting uh, products there. We've looked at the uh, Hook It EF and the uh, Surface Pro 2000 here. We're going to look at the Glide, which is more of a polish. So we're going to take a look at that next time. Um, and uh, you know what, Dale? I might even send it to Australia. I might even send it to Australia. We could probably work something out. You know, I'm still threatening to come down there and visit. <clears throat> Um, Sea Lance, just resting your elbow. It took three months off. That's a good idea. Always be safe. Heal those, heal those injuries. Summer's a great time for that. Um, but don't forget, very important, after your injury, before you go back to bowling, take some time to stretch. Take some time before you go out and bowl. Just roll your ball in the backyard a couple times, you know, five times. Just get your muscle, get the, the ligaments used to throwing the ball again very gradually you know do two shots one day and give it a couple days and then three shots and then five or what have you um, by taking the time to get them all stretched out and used to moving again before you go uh, it's going to keep you from straining or, or uh, hurting yourself when you get back to bowling uh, this is true for stretching of your legs um, a lot of people complain about straining their butt or the inside of their legs um, like the, the middle of their groin, um, all sorts of injuries like that happen when you come off back off a layoff. <clears throat> so don't forget to, you know, take the time and stretch a little bit. I'm a really big fan of yoga. Um, I do my DDP yoga. I, it helps me stay moving uh, with my fibromyalgia. It helps me get stretched out. I use it to heat, to work on my, uh, plantar fi fasciitis, which is, um, a bad foot issue. Uh, I've torn my Achilles on that foot, which is probably why I have it. Um, I use it to keep it stretched out and stuff so I can keep bowling. Uh, I don't think I could probably keep bowling without my DDP yoga. <clears throat> so um, ibuprofen, yeah, that will definitely help. Um, yeah, I turned 43 in a month, so I need to... Um, just give me one second here. Vincent, come here! Look, not only is he in the chat... See, he's actually in here as well. Hello. Um, did you want to borrow that ball? I know you were having problems with the thumb. Did you want me to take a look at the thumb too? No, I just don't have the insert. Oh, okay. You put the insert in the other ball. In the havoc? Yeah. yeah, if you bring the havoc up to me tomorrow, we'll just take that thumb out. I'm not and... here tomorrow. That's what I'm bowling off. Oh, you're, are you bowling off tonight? Yeah. Then go get your havoc and bring it here and I will take care of it for oh, you. I didn't bring that one. Oh. Sorry, I know. I screwed up. No, it's no, okay. Don't forget. You Forget didn't that. screw up. You just, I, I wasn't clear. Yeah. I wasn't clear. It's all good. Vincent here is been one of our fans from the beginning. He, I actually coached him as a youth as well. 
Uh, I'm very proud of him. He's uh, at college right now and still bowling and doing stuff. So I wanted he was here. I just wanted him to say hi on the <laughs> on the thing there. I know you got to get back to your stuff, but I yes. I good luck on your pre bowl tonight. I will try. <laughs> awesome. Everybody wish uh, wish Vincent good luck. Yeah. Good bowling. He bowled a youth event this week and he just barely missed qualifying. What four pins? Yeah, it was forty five off of fifth, and our team killed it on Saturday. We were ninety one ninety four average, fifth place overall. That's awesome. And fifth place overall during the team. That's awesome. Vincent killed it all weekend. Um, just just missed uh, qualifying in the YBT, the Youth Bowling Tour event, um, this weekend. And, uh, yeah, very proud of you. Go bowl off, my friend. Go go have a good time. Go, Vincent. Charlie B said go, Vincent. <laughs> Probably waiting for you, right? Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, do you have any tricks for dealing with swelling thumb during summer tournaments? Sarah? That's okay. Um, yes. Uh, there's a couple of things that I highly recommend. It actually starts the day before. Um, this happens a lot, especially when people go to events in the south. Um, a lot of humidity that's dealt with that. First, make sure you take some rosin so you can take some of the humidity out of your skin. Um, if you're having problems keeping tape on your thumb, uh, use some uh, rubbing alcohol. If you clean your rubbing your thumb with uh, even with like a wet nap with rubbing alcohol in it, it will help the adhesion and it'll actually keep it from sweating a little bit. Um, most importantly, the day before, even the week before, start drinking a little bit of extra water. Um, cut down on your salt just a tiny, tiny bit. And the day before you bowl in a tournament uh, and during the event, try to eat watery foods. Um, strawberries, watermelons, um, things like that that have natural sugars that will give you some I, I know it's tough during a tournament to do this so trust me I understand um, they'll give you some natural sugars that also have some liquid to them um, that way while you're bowling your body isn't retaining as much water um, it'll also because you're using a little bit less salt and you're using um, natural waters and stuff so cutting out pops, too much caffeine, things like that. Your body will be able to, to uh, not quite sweat as badly. So you're going to find yourself not um, getting dehydrated as easily. During the event, I also suggest you drink uh, 250 mill milliliters of water uh, for every hour that you're bowling. So like half a, wa half of a, a water bottle, half of a water bottle. Um, that will keep you, yes, you're going to have to pee at some point during the event. It's going to be inevitable. Um, but it's going to keep you hydrated, which is going to keep your body working properly. Those natural sugars are going to keep you from crashing. And speaking of those, um, nuts, cranberries, um, raisins, trail mix, that kind of stuff, is a wonderful food to eat during tournaments because it has the kind of carbohydrates that your body can convert quickly into energy and keep your brain and your muscles going because a lot of people their bodies don't wear out but they get fatigued from a loss of of uh, water and a lot a loss of food um, so it keeps your mind very sharp so i hope that helps um what else we got? John B. Interchangeable thumbs. Yes. Uh, interchangeable thumbs also help a lot. Um, we, John and I have talked about this before. Um, and I talked about this on the show last week. I have several different sizes, different pitches uh, that allow you to uh, better deal with severe changes. Um, with my fibromyalgia, I have huge swings in, in my thumbs uh, up to an eighth of an inch. So I, I have to. I have to have different sizes. I don't. I know some people who have those some dramatic issues like that. They're usually not that bad. They're usually you know a thirty second to sixteenth. But interchangeable thumbs is a perfect way to fix it as well. Um, Charlie B. Charlie B. Bold the event this weekend too. I'm just proud of all of my uh, local uh, bowlers. They bowled uh, two, three different events this weekend here in Barrie. Um, 
Charlie was awesome. Riley, uh, our cold-hearted, handsome devil. Uh, Riley Russell did awesome all weekend. Uh, we had Vincent there. We had uh, Jackson. Uh, Jackson Lee is uh, a, not only j a, someone who I've coached, but he's a good friend. Um, really great guy. We had so many youth. I think um, Josh Batista was there. He qualified in, in one of the events. Like We had a lot of local people. Did really, really well. Old school bowlers that like to use chapstick. Yep, I've seen that. People have put, um, if you don't, if in an emergency, you can put chapstick on because it'll give you a little bit of uh, protection so that the friction isn't as bad on your thumb, but it will get a little greasy, just so you know. Um, tried the wet nap trick uh, to get the tape to stick, uh, but it hasn't worked. Not sure if it's the brand. The higher the... Uh, alcohol content, the closer to 99% to that you can get, the better it should dry. Uh, I know I have bought wet naps that have a little bit of lemon in it and that, that completely t um, destroys it. They have to be just alcohol naps. Um, hey, it's Martin Larson's birthday today. Awesome. Yes, Team Barry killed it. So on that note, Team Barry killed it. On that note, Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Very much appreciated. Um, don't forget to join us on social media, lanesidereviews.com. It'll take you to our Facebook page. Or look at Team LSR or Laneside Reviews on social media. Um, does, does the name Torn Shepherd ring? He drilled some of my Tom Chef. Uh, offhand, it, not, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't ring a bell to me, but... If there's a viewer out there who sees that comment, please make a comment. Let them know if you've if you've heard of Tom Shepard out of uh, Santa Monica. Let's find out. Um, night, everybody. We really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to catch us next Tuesday night. We'll figure something out. Uh, we're going to look at some products. We're going to have ourselves a good time because we always do. And we're going to give away a shirt. So until next time, guys, keep the ball on the lanes. Knock down some pins, and we'll see you later inside. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a show. So until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side.